The Bible speaks of a great falling away, a rejection of the truth, an apostasy, a rebellion, an abandonment of the truth. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. This passage warns us that in the end times, there will be a wholesale rejection of God's revelation and a further, quote, falling away of an already fallen world. It describes a rebellion, an abandonment of the truth, and it is something that should concern us deeply. So what is this great falling away, and why should we be aware of it? Put simply, it is a turning away from God and a rejection of His truth. It is a rejection of the gospel and all that it stands for, and it is a refusal to submit to the authority of Christ. It is a rejection of the very foundation of our faith. First and foremost, it is important to highlight that there is a debate among biblical scholars regarding the meaning of the great falling away in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Some scholars argue that it refers to an apostasy among those who once followed God, while others believe it is a general worldwide rebellion. While there are compelling arguments on both sides, I believe that the Apostle Paul here in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 may have both in mind, as there is evidence of each in the end times. So we are going to look at both of these perspectives regarding the great falling away. Perspective number one, a worldwide falling away. As we look at the world around us, it's not hard to see that we are living in a time of great moral decay and spiritual darkness. And this is because the world at large is moving further and further away from the truth of God. The values and principles that once held our societies together are being undermined and discarded, and we are seeing a rise in wickedness, immorality, and lawlessness. More and more people are no longer believing in God, and our society has arguably reached the levels of immorality of Sodom and Gomorrah. Our society has arguably surpassed the levels of immorality of Sodom and Gomorrah. There is a falling away happening, a rejection of the truth of the gospel. It is a time when people are becoming increasingly self-centered and are turning away from God and His ways. But the great falling away that is prophesied in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 goes even further than this. It is a time when people will actively rebel against God and His truth. The world is going through a period of apostasy where people are turning away from God and embracing sin and all its pleasures. It is a time where the world celebrates sin, encourages self-centeredness, and calls evil good while rejecting all that is holy and good. We are living in a world that is constantly bombarding us with messages that promote selfishness and self-centeredness. It encourages us to focus on ourselves and our own desires without regard for others, and most importantly, without regard for God. The world has normalized behaviors and lifestyles that are contrary to God's word, and those who choose to stand for what is right and true are ridiculed and ostracized. One of the major issues in the last days is selfishness. Marriages are ending because of selfishness. People are endorsing sin more and more in society because of selfishness. We, as believers, need to make sure we do not allow selfishness to creep into our hearts. It is easy to become selfish and focus only on our own needs and desires. We may become so consumed with our own lives that we forget about our responsibilities to God and to those around us. This is a dangerous path to follow, and it is one that we must avoid at all costs, because the culture of this world will usher you down this path. The world preaches, do whatever feels good to you. The world preaches, live your own truth. The world preaches, make up your own reality. That is selfish. As Christians, we are called to serve God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are to love God above all else and put His will before our own. This means that we must be willing to make sacrifices for God and for others. We must be willing to give up our own desires and put the needs of others before our own. 
As Christians, we are called to be selfless and to serve others. We are called to be the light of the world, to love our neighbors as ourselves, and to put the needs of others before our own. This is not an easy task, but it is one that we must undertake if we are to follow Christ faithfully. Fall out of love with yourself, and fall out of love with sin, and fall in love with God. Fall in love with your family. Fall in love with your kids. Look after them. They are your responsibility. Do not be selfish and abandon your children. Raise them in knowing the Lord. Raise them in knowing the God of Abraham. I say this because we are living in a culture that encourages selfishness. The world encourages us to indulge in our sinful desires, to pursue pleasure at all costs, and to live life on our own terms, rather than the terms we have been given in the Word of God. It promotes a culture of lust, where sexual immorality is not only accepted but celebrated. The world tells us that there is nothing wrong with indulging in our lusts and desires, that we should do whatever makes us happy. As Christians, we are called to be set apart from the world. We are called to be holy as God is holy, to live a life that is pleasing to Him. We are called to love one another, to serve one another, and to put others before ourselves. We are called to resist the devil and all his temptations and to stand firm in our faith. In these times, it is crucial for us to guard our hearts and minds against the influence of the world. We need to be vigilant in our pursuit of righteousness and holiness, and we need to surround ourselves with fellow believers who will encourage and strengthen us in our faith. We are living in a world that is becoming even more fallen. We are witnessing the great falling away. Now, let us explore the second perspective that the great falling away refers to, an apostasy among those who once followed God. The scriptures teach that there will be a great apostasy in the end times, where many who once professed faith in Jesus Christ will abandon it. And I believe this will occur in two forms. The first form being that there will be people who were once in the faith and then completely left the faith all in all. The second form is through churches that follow doctrines of devils and follow seducing spirits. The second form is churches that follow doctrines of devils and follow seducing spirits. The number of Christians and religious quote nons who believe in the virgin birth of Jesus Christ has decreased significantly since 2014, according to a survey released by the Pew Research Center in December 2017. According to the statistics, about 66% of Americans believe Jesus was born to a virgin, down from 73% in 2014. A significant drop was also observed among young adults within ages 18 to 29, with only 54% affirming a belief in the virgin birth of Jesus. Meanwhile, in 2014, 70% held that belief. This decline of belief in the virgin birth is a perfect example of people departing from the faith. When you no longer believe in the virgin birth, you are worshiping a different Jesus Christ. According to a survey conducted by Legionnaire Ministries in Florida, 2020, 52% of U.S. adults say they believe Jesus Christ is not God. This belief, as we all know, contradicts traditional teachings of the Bible through the Christian church, which states Jesus was both man and God. Moreover, nearly one-third of evangelicals in the survey agreed that Jesus isn't God, compared to 65% who said, quote, Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God. This doctrine has been accepted by many in the body of Christ, and it is in a bit to corrupt our understanding of biblical truths. Sound doctrine is literally the difference between heaven and hell. I was shocked when reading this article that nearly one-third of evangelicals in the survey agreed that Jesus isn't God, compared to 65% who said, quote, Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God. They are worshiping another Jesus, and not the Jesus of this Bible. No wonder Jesus said that it is not all that call him Lord that will enter into the kingdom of God. I encourage you to read your Bible for you to be rooted in sound doctrine. Do not depart from the faith. There are so many seducing spirits out there. But protect yourself by falling in love with the Bible. Protect yourself by knowing your Bible. Protect yourself by sound doctrine. Jesus Christ is not a created being or the first creation. John chapter 1 verse 1 tells us that in the beginning was the Word, 
The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ is not a creature of God, He is God Himself. If we are robbed of this understanding, then our Christian faith is baseless. Jesus came in the flesh. He was completely human and completely divine. Many preachers try to make people see Jesus as a mere miracle worker and a compassionate man. They try to make Jesus a good man with good moral values, while some present him as the greatest being in the creation of God. But these views are not true about Jesus. How can you liken the Creator to a creation? Jesus Christ is God. He came in the flesh to die for our sins and give us the hope of eternal life with God. Anyone that preaches against this truth is a deceiver and an antichrist. Paul knew that such a time as this will come in the body of Christ, and he wrote to the Corinthian believers in Galatians chapter 1, verses 8-9, through 9, saying, But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed.